Hello, and welcome to chapter 11. Uh, some of the Asian countries which are not China. So those, uh, we've kind of talked about a little bit, uh, the way the Chinese operated in the good old days was not necessarily conquering other people, but having them be like tribute states to them. So let's explore some of those states on China's periphery. Um, so Japan, quick run through of Japanese history. You have people came to Japan, uh, set up an empire after you know thousands of years, and that's the Yamato Dynasty, which is actually still the ruling dynasty of Japan today. Um, so you have the Yamato, and then you have the Nara period. And the Nara, they are very China-centric. Uh, Nara, and then you have the Haiyan. And then Haiyan kind of disintegrates uh, because of really tight court politics and stuff like that. The imperial court is so focused on themselves that you know, kind of falls apart. And in the absence of uh, sufficient imperial rule, you have the rule or like the rise of a thing called the shogunate, which is a unique Japanese institution wherein there is a military leader who runs the government. Uh, oh, okay, so real quick, some vocab words. So in history, we have things which are de facto and de jure. This is your uh, Latin lesson of the day. So de facto means of fact, like that which is real. So right now, right now it's 2019, uh, Russia de facto controls Crimea in, you know, what was Ukrainian territory, de facto. Officially though, of the law, legally, the Ukraine still controls the Crimean Peninsula. So de jure, it's Ukrainian, de facto, it's Russian. Similarly in Japan, the government was de jure run by the uh, emperor, but de facto it was run by the um, the shogun. So that's the early like Ashikaga shogunate. Eventually the Ashikaga collapse. I don't think the book goes that far. Yeah, that'll that'll get into like the Onin War and the cool stuff later. But you know, brief summary of Japan. That's kind of the history. And so Japan goes uh, waxing and waning of their interest in China. Sometimes they're very China-centric. Uh, sometimes they kind of pull back and are more into themselves and their own culture. So, yes. Um, yeah, so after that you have, um, uh, I guess to analyze the culture a little bit, you have Shintoism is a unique Japanese religion, uh, which is animistic. And animism is a belief that many things have spirits, uh, and those spirits in Japan are called the kami. So they believe that there are kami within a number of, you know, sacred groves, stuff like that. And that starts to kind of blend with Buddhism when Buddhism, and what kind of Buddhism is it? Mahayana, excellent. Uh, Mahayana Buddhism, when it arrives in Japan, it kind of merges in with Shintoism and creates a unique Japanese system, which is a blend of the two. So, so yeah, so, so that's Japan. We'll hit on some more Japanese stuff later. Um, then you have Korea. Korea is at first the three kingdoms. Um, those are eventually unified into the Goryeo dynasty, which is from whence we get Korea. And Korea, unfor well, unfortunately for the Koreans, it's always kind of in the middle of power plays between Japan and China. For the most part, the Chinese dominated um, dominate their affairs as, you know, a tributary state for a lot of Korean history. So Korea has a lot of Chinese cultural influences uh, in the form of, they have a form of writing in Korean, which is through Chinese characters instead of, you know, Korean Hangul. Um, some other example is the Koreans have uh, the sort of state Confucianism that the Ming have. So a lot of influence coming from China because you know, they're kind of right next to each other. And then we have Vietnam. We talked about Vietnam a little bit last time. Just remember, Vietnam has an empire. Um, it's a rice-growing area. And their 
better at staying out of China's total domination, uh, you know, as opposed to some other countries. The, the Vietnamese have a very strong independence streak, and while they do take some cultural cues from the Chinese, it's not as intense as some other places experience. So that was a pretty short chapter. Um, yeah. All right, great. And just remember, you know, the Mongols try to take over Japan. They do take over Korea, and they can't take over Vietnam. All right, that's it for today. Y'all have a nice day. Bye-bye.